Hello, this is Justin from the Tech Train here, and in this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create perfect spheres in Microsoft PowerPoint. You see, I have examples here of a beautifully lit sphere. Uh, we've got some other colors here, and I'll also show you in this tutorial how to create transparent spheres that look like bubbles. So to create a perfect sphere like this, we're going to start with a new slide and I'll just let uh, make sure the layout is blank. And what we're going to do is go to insert and click on shapes. So we're going to choose the uh, ellipse or oval shape here. Now, one little tip that you may know is that um, when you normally create an ellipse, it becomes quite a distorted oval or ellipse shape. And for this, of course, we'll need it to be a perfect circle. So to make sure that what you're drawing is a perfect circle, hold down shift and that will snap the shape so that it becomes a perfect circle. Now what I want to do is to make sure that this is as large as possible. So even if you only need quite a small sphere for your work, uh, it's best to make it as large as possible and then you can always shrink it down later on. But the quality is better if you start with it large. Now once you've created your sphere, we'll just make sure that the base fill colour is chosen. Uh, I'll create a blue sphere for this one. And make sure that there's no outline. Next, we'll right click on this uh, circle and go down to Format Shape, which opens up this window on the right hand side. Now we're going to create the uh, effects uh, of a sphere, so we'll click on the Effects tab in the middle there, and then we'll come down to 3D Rotation. It's possible that some of these uh, menu options here are collapsed, so make sure you're clicking on 3D Rotation. And what we're going to do is rotate this circle, which of course is a flat shape. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees along the X axis, so effectively that's almost like taking this sphere and turning it sideways. So when we do that, oops, didn't mean to type in there. When we do that, uh, what we're creating, of course, is um, a flat shape exactly on its side that we won't be able to see. So on the X rotation, I'll type 90 degrees, and that makes it look as though the circle has completely disappeared. But what we've done is turn it sideways, uh, so it's flat onto us now, um, edge onto us rather, and so of course being completely flat, we can't see it. So now we'll head up to the 3D format menu and we'll choose the height option in top bevel. So find top bevel, find the height, and just simply click the up arrow. And as soon as you do, you'll see that something starts to appear. Now you want to just simply hold down this up arrow and keep increasing it until this right hand line, this right hand edge, meets the edge of the square outline for our shape. So we're going to uh, keep it going until the right hand edge of the blue shape touches the vertical line that marks the right hand edge of the shape area. nearly there and I think there will do. You can always zoom in and get it more exact but that, that's about right. I think maybe just a couple more points. There we are. Now once you've done that uh, take the number that's in here 254.5 yours of course may be different. Uh, so copy that and then what you want to do is to paste it into the width directly above then also for the bottom bevel the width and also the height. So for the top and bottom bevel, all four match the same number. Now once you've done that, you sort of start to get the sphere, but you're still looking at it sideways on. So what we'll do is come back down to the 3D rotation, find the X rotation, which is still 90, and reset that back to zero. So when you press zero, you can see that we've now got a perfect sphere. Now, once you've got the perfect sphere, uh, you can, of course, then start to play around with all sorts of different effects. Uh, it does work if you wanted to create um, 
a gradient fill, for example. So we could add a gradient fill and we could start putting in different colors. So we can apply uh, maybe a red uh, and maybe a purple and set that as a maybe a linear gradient like that. So we can create this uh, this effect. And what you'll also want to do is to play around with the lighting. So if we uh, right click on this shape and we go to format shape and we click on effects in the middle and at the at the bottom of this menu with 3D format, you can see we have material and lighting. Uh, these are the two which you can play around with. Uh, if we go to material, for example, uh, you can play around with this and different materials will give you uh, different uh, effects, different sort of shininess, different intensity of the lighting. And if you want to create bubbles or semi-transparent, then this translucent section at the bottom is the one to use. And in particular, the one on the right hand side, the clear one. That creates this transparent effect. And if I copy that and paste it in front of a background, you can see that that is transparent and creates that sort of bubble effect like that. Now, once we've created the different uh, size of it, the different uh, effects, the different lighting and so forth. So I'll just put that back to lighting. We'll have quite a, a shiny effect there. The next thing is really, really important because once you've got the um, the shape that you want, the effect that you want, uh, the next thing will probably be to resize it or copy it. And that's fine, except that there can be issues with that. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let me just go back a little bit. So we have the, uh, the blue ball here, uh, because you can probably see this quite clearly with a blue background. So there is the sphere, that looks great. What I'm going to do is move that right to the left hand edge and then I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to right click and paste. Now this is really important. When I right click, I have two paste options. I can either use the destination theme, which will paste that sphere uh, as a shape, which it is at the moment, or I can use this little clipboard with a picture on it and, and right click that as a picture, uh, which is what I'm going to do. So I have the left hand image, which is a shape, and the right hand image is just a picture. Now you might think there's not much difference between the two, but watch what happens if I select both of these two and I resize them. So I'm going to resize them, bring them in, everything looks fine, although you'll notice that the one on the left seems to look a bit flatter. The one on the right still retains the shininess and the reflection. And when I let go, then you can see exactly what's going on. Let me zoom in so you can see. You'll see that the one on the left, that's the shape, has now become more of a cone that we're looking down on, whereas the one on the right that we pasted as a picture still looks exactly the same. And that's to do with the fact that those numbers on the right hand side that we chose when we went to format shape and we chose the 3D effects and, and these numbers here, this 254.5, that was only relevant for the circle uh, that we had originally, for the um, diameter of that circle originally. And that number is no longer correct for a circle of this diameter. So it's really important that once you have created your sphere, so once you've created the, the sphere that you want, uh, that's a little too large perhaps, we can cut that and then paste it as a picture so that now we can have that, uh, that ball as small or indeed as large as you like and that will never look distorted. It'll still look like a perfect sphere. Uh, so you can see like that, if I run that uh, PowerPoint, well, that's a little bit, perhaps I overdid it a bit there. That's a little too big uh, for you to see. But you can certainly tell that no matter what size it is, we've still got that perfect sphere. So you can see like that, it's, it's still looking correct. So I hope that that's uh, of interest to you. So you can see how we've got uh, some really good spheres there uh, created using the circle tool um, and which you can use to create some really lovely effects, whether it be simple bullet points, whether it be parts of an image or whether it be uh, to create a stylish PowerPoint uh, background. So creating perfect spheres in PowerPoint really easily. 
I hope this was useful to you. If it was, I'd be very grateful if you'd click the like button before you go. Uh, of course, if you've not subscribed, then please do, because that makes all the difference to both you and me. Um, and of course, you'll be first to know when new videos are up. Uh, so thank you very much indeed for watching. Thank you very much for your like and any comments that you leave below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.